Guess what? Dry rot? Bullet holes? Wrong. The hands that are marking its flaws will discard it as rubbish. In fact, it's the rejected corner of a piece of finest calfskin destined to be the side of a drum. Sam Potter, drum major in the Coldstream Guards, started to make drums in this way five years before the Battle of Waterloo. No muskets for that Sam. They still use his methods in the workshop off Charing Cross Road, where the craft is now followed under the name of his descendant, Henry. George Heath shows how shells and hoops are bent into shape. Made from the finest ash, each piece has been seasoned for not less than a year. Both hoops and shells were roughly steam bent before they reached these expert hands. Shaped to the exact diameter of the drum in the making, they now receive final touches before passing on to George's workmate, Bill Allen, who starts lapping on the skin. Lapping on, it's a fine old English term for a skilled old craft. Prior to lapping, the skin was damped to enable it to be stretched to the utmost. Now it is as taut as can be until the cords and braces are put on to adjust its final pitch. Drums made like this will endure for hundreds of years. Drake's drum, for example, remember? After the craftsmanship, the heraldry. The finest gold leaf and oil pigments are used by Frederick Eaton, who employs the technique unchanged since Sam Potter's day, to ornament the shell with regimental badges and honors. So, to the final stage, the threading of the cords. Cords like this, stretched taut on drums at Waterloo, Lucknow, Sebastopol. One more drum is ready, one more history begun. No wonder the latest drum, to mark the half century, bears the badge of Sam's old regiment, the Coldstream Guards. <laughs>